Yeah, Tao Sun is a student of mine. He wasn't able to come, so I'll be giving the talk for him. Um, here we're, we're continuing our work uh, that, that we're doing, trying to have a closed loop controller based on harmonic emission uh, during blood brain barrier opening in normal brain and in tumors. Um, and so this is an approach we've been working on. It's, a, it's an alternative to what the Sunny group, uh, group is doing and what the Columbia group is doing. Um, so here, we, uh, there's a very narrow window between when you have blood-brain barrier opening and damage. And uh, so we want to be able to uh, have a real-time controller to make sure that every point that we're sonicating at has uh, the correct exposure level. Um, so a number of groups, as I mentioned, have looked at using passive cavitation detection. Also, we're now starting to see passive mapping uh, to uh, correlate these uh, emissions that we're seeing with BBB opening. So what we did here was to build a system that gives us a closed loop cavitation based controller that will tailor the, the blood brain barrier opening and the drug delivery uh, based on harmonic emissions looking at the second and the third harmonic while at the same time suppressing the likelihood of broadband emission. Uh, so we, we did a number of studies uh, starting with optimization, uh, then correlating the BBB opening with a, a, a reference to the cavitation, um, using this as an active controller to control the exposure level, and then finally looking at the control delivery of a, a, a drug, liposomal doxorubicin, to the F98 RAC glioma model. Um, the system that we built is a two transducer system. Um, it operates at a frequency similar to what we're going to be using, hopefully, with the, the Exoblate Neuro. So this one operates at 270 kilohertz. Uh, to reduce the size of the effective focal area, we use uh, two transducers with an op overlapping focus. Oops, wrong button, sorry. Um, here, and the, the actual size of the focus can create a spot of BBB opening that's smaller than the wrap brain. Typically, we cover the entire thickness of the wrap brain. It also gives us a nice area to put a, a passive cavitation detector. Uh, we, we built a, a proportional controller that allows us to uh, actively control the power level to maintain a, a pre-described level of uh, harmonic emission. Um, and then also, if we see any broadband emission, that, that either does what we want it to, either stops the sonication or reduces the power. Um, then we, we, we looked at uh, using MRI and also fluorescence imaging of tripan blue and doxorubicin to, to validate this controller. Um, so the first step we did was look at uh, different parameters. So we, we, we counted the, the rate of uh, uh, harmonic emissions that were within the, the goal that we set. And we looked at it as a function of the PRF. And we also looked at bolus injection and uh, continuous infusion using a mixing injector that we built. Um, we can see that based on this, we, we had better perf uh, controller performance at the higher uh, repetition frequency, um, where we had a, a higher percentage of the rate. Um, and then also with infusion, so, and that makes sense, is if you give the bolus, the, the bubbles clear out and you start, incre you know, you lose the, uh, the signal starts to drop. Um, and so the, uh, the, the controlling, this was, uh, then we use this to pick out the optimal parameters that we used in the rest of the study. Um, so here then we developed this reference curve. Um, here we did uh, fluorescence imaging ex vivo of uh, uh, tripan blue distributions. And then we, we, we plot the, uh, the enhancement of the harmonic emissions. This is reference to measurements that we obtained earlier without microbubbles. So we're just looking at the microbubble effect on the sonications. And then we can plot this as a function or the, the intensity, which is the proportional to the amount of the, the agents that's delivered. And we see a reasonably good fit. And this agrees, even the shape of this agrees with what we've seen before with using MRI and in our monkey experiments. Uh, we've done a little bit of the H&E, and &E, and we, uh, we're still working on this, but we don't see any evident vascular damage, at least, on the, uh, on the, even on the, the highest uh, sonicated, uh, the highest end of this, this range. Um, then we went back and said, well, can we use this and say, I want to get a particular amount of drug delivered to the brain. So I set the controller so that it stops when it gets to the, to the integrated uh, harmonic emission that we're looking at. And we can see that we, when we did that in, with different groups, uh, we were able to reproduce that and, and direct how much drug we want to get to the brain by controlling the amount of the, the harmonic emissions. 
Um, and then finally, we looked at this in a tumor model. Um, in the, in uh, with the F98 model, we put two tumors in each rat. Um, this was these were sonicated outside the MRI using a stereotactic frame with the, the two transducer system, um, and then we uh, imaged them afterwards in the MRI, and we could see that we were able to enhance the amount of gadolinium uh, delivery. And then this is also in the normal brain, uh, an additional target. And then again, using uh, an IVIS system, uh, we can then map both doxorubicin distributions and tripan blue distributions. This is a work in progress. I think he did this experiment on Friday. Um, and we can see that there, we're starting to see, this is uh, very early, so we're starting to see that uh, we are seeing this trend that we saw in the normal brain. Hopefully, we'll be able to use this in a similar way, but we need to take into account uh, the, the microbubble concentration and the vascularity of the tissue so that we can really tease out what these signals are, are showing us. All right, so summarize, we uh, were able to use the uh, active controller uh, to, to get the amount of harmonic emission that we want while not having any broadband emission. Uh, we, we have this dual aperture system that allows us to test very low frequency uh, sonications, even in a small animal system. And we were able to correlate the emissions with the amount of the agent that we delivered, both with a dye and with a chemotherapy drug, and in uh, starting to see it in tumors. And with that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the funding sources and thank you for your attention.